I never thought I'd be saying this, but I'm hunting with a 6.5 Creedmoor. Guy Miner here from UltimateReloader.com, and it's about darn time. In this story, we're going to talk about me using a new cartridge. New? Yeah, it was introduced in 2007, the 6.5 Creedmoor, but I'm just getting around to using it. We're going to talk about the new rifle, this Bergara. We're going to talk about the load I came up with matching the 6.5 Creed with that rifle for hunting. We're going to get into what my expectations for the cartridge and rifle were, and also the research that I did on the 6.5 Creedmoor that led me towards those expectations, and then how I prepared the load and the rifle for hunting. So about my research and expectations of the 6.5 Creedmoor, I start out by taking a look online and in print magazines and talking to some of my friends who've used the 6.5 Creed for hunting and got their perspective on not only hunting with it but also hand loading the cartridge, things that would work for them. And I thought, okay, that's good for me to know and things that maybe didn't work out so well for them. And one of the things that struck me is I had considered this to be just you know a light recoiling cartridge. I'd shot it a few times. I said, well, that's, that's gonna work out really well as a deer cartridge. And then I started hearing the stories and seeing some of the videos about people taking elk. And I thought, wow, you know, big bull elk, that's a pretty tough critter. And yet they were doing a fine job of dropping elk with a little tiny 6.5 Creed. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And not just elk, but people shooting moose and people shooting big bears, even grizzly bears, with the 6.5 Creed. And my eyes kind of opened up on that, and then I took a look, and I said, okay, well, apparently it's a pretty capable little round. And then I thought back about my own experiences, because I've done a lot of hunting with the good old 25-06. And with that, I'm using 100 and 115 grain bullets. Well, the 6.5 Creed takes a bigger bullet than that. Bigger diameter, more weight. Okay, good. So my expectations were that I was going to wind up with an accurate, easy-to-shoot cartridge. I knew that because it started out as a target cartridge developed by some guys who really knew what they were doing in the target shooting world. And then also, I found out about it being used at longer ranges than I typically hunt. I put about a 400 yard cap on most of my hunting. It's like, that's far enough for me. I don't like risking the shot out past that. And then also most of the time I hunt mule deer, um, mule deer and sometimes antelope and sometimes elk, sometimes bear. That's, that's kind of my hunting. That's what I was expecting. I was expecting an easy to shoot, accurate deer load. And we'll see how my expectations were met. We had a hunt planned, my son and I. He's been my hunting buddy for a good 20 years, probably more. We hunt mostly together, especially with big game. Uh, deer and up, you know, we'll, we'll hunt that together. I have been hunting up in Okanagan County, Washington, which is right on the border with Canada, for nearly 30 years off and on. I like to go up there, it's beautiful country, there's an abundance of game, the fishing's good. Um, yeah, I like it up there and I've met some good success on do-it-yourself hunts and also two years ago my son and I treated ourselves to a guided hunt with Okanagan Valley Guide Service and we managed to get two bucks. Oftentimes the two of us do not get a buck on the same hunt. He'll wind up with one or I'll wind up with one and by the time we get the buck all taken care of and it's time to go home and we don't get the other one. So this time we wound up with both of them and it was a really good experience. And uh, so we plan on going with them again. So John and I headed up to Okanagan County and we were gonna hunt for several days. Sadly, our hunt got cut short before either one of us got a chance to shoot a buck. We had to cut that short and get back home. So we did that and that was kind of the end of my deer season for this year. So now the emphasis is gonna be getting back out there, as I often do, hunting predators the rest of winter. So about the rifle, this too was a big departure for me. You guys know that I normally hunt with a walnut stocked bolt action rifle with a fixed six power scope and something really outrageous like 30-06 or 25-06, stuff that's been around for oh, 100 years. Um, that's my norm. This year, I got an opportunity to hunt with something completely new to me. This is the Bergara B14 Ridge Carbon Wilderness. And I gotta tell you, I like it. It's been in a video before here on Ultimate Reloader, 
with all the specifics. Gavin goes over all that, but I'll talk, talk you through it briefly. Short action B14. B14 is noted for being a very, very smooth action to work, and I found that to be true. This has the first time I've ever used one. They call it the Cure carbon wrapped barrel. It is 22 inches long, has the usual 1 to 8 twist, which is normal on a 6.5 Creed and most other 6.5 cartridges. And it has a, a muzzle brake on it, which is also something I'm not particularly used to. So that was a whole lot of difference from here out forward. The action's pretty familiar with me, um, but very well made. Has a uh, American style sporter type stock, very comfortable to me. Not my walnut, okay? So I had to get kind of used to the looks, but I was also a SWAT sniper carrying a synthetic stock rifle for a lot of years, and so it's not that different for me, okay? One of the things I really like about the way the rifle's set up, it has these Hawkins rings, have a built-in 25 MOA increase there, and a real nice loophole, three to 15 power 44 millimeter objective, it is one nice scope. My six power scopes have been a favorite of mine for many, many years, and I use them on most of my hunting. This was, uh, this was real nice. I didn't need a spotting scope at the range to see my hits when I was sighting it in. Very clear optics, lots of fun to use, easy rifle to shoot. We'll get into some more on that in a bit. It's a, it's a good package, very, very updated from what I'm used to using. So to set up the bear rifle for hunting, Gavin had already installed the rings, the Hawkins long range rings, and the 3 to 15 loophole scope. That was a good start. I wanted some more stuff on there for hunting. I had been trying some Ultradyne's products here at uh, Ultimate Reloader for a while and decided to go ahead and hunt with Ultradyne's carbon tripod. Nice package not nearly as heavy as one of the tripods I have been hunting with, and it gives you a really good way of stabilizing that rifle for longer, more precision shooting. Uh, to help me out with that, Gavin put a short Arca rail on the bottom of the stock there. That was nice, and it worked out real well. It mounts it pretty securely on there. I added something that I've used a long time. I think I got this Turner Sling, oh, probably about 1995 or so and it has been with me on many, many hunts. I've also shot a lot of matches with it. It's a Turner National Match service rifle sling. I've used it a lot. Uh, great piece of gear. We also, of course, had a spotting scope, good binoculars, and a range finder along with us on the hunt. Those are what we hunt with. The rifles are what we do our shooting with, but those are what we hunt with. The spotting scope, the good binoculars, and the range finder. Okay, here's the basics on the hunting load that I came up with and kind of how I came up with it. We'll get into some more of the specifics on the components here in just a bit. I chose Sierra's 140 grain tipped Game King bullet for this. I wanted to get to know that bullet. I'd used Sierra Game Kings with great satisfaction in the past, not too, not too distant past actually, and I wanted to give, go ahead and give this new bullet a try. Uh, Hornady cases and I was encouraged to try after my research, Vitavori N555 powder. It is apparently very good for the 6.5 Creed. That's its reputation, and uh, yeah, I found that to be true. We'll get into more on that later. I use good old CCI BR2 primers. They do a fine job. I've never had any trouble with them. Manage an average velocity of 2,689 feet per second with this load. I was about four tenths of a grain under Vitavori's max for this powder, and they were measuring from a 24 inch barrel. I've got a 22 inch barrel. I was very satisfied. I kind of wanted to get to 2,700 feet per second, but that's just a number. 2,689 is plenty close enough for me. The next figure that I really was impressed with was the SD. With a standard deviation of only 8.1 feet per second, this load is down in match rifle country. That's the kind of thing you want to see, those single digit SD figures. The extreme spread for my string of fire was 25.5 feet per second. Let's get into the details. Sierra's Tip Game King is a fairly new bullet in their lineup, and it goes across the board. They've got a whole bunch of different cartridges, or they've got a whole bunch of different calibers for the Tipped Game King. 
it's more than just taking the old Game King and popping a plastic tip on it. The uh, jacket is much stronger, thicker, and is resistant to the overexpansion that can sometimes happen on these tipped bullets when you've got that big hollow point down there in the lead core and on the jacket to help initiate that expansion and to help hold the, uh, the plastic tip. So this one is a little bit more resistant to that. I've got to try this in gel later. 140 grains to me is kind of a sweet spot for the 6.5 Creed. I've done some target shooting with it and the 140s usually shoot really, really well. Diameter, of course, is 0.264 inches, as they all are. G1BC, according to Sierra, is 0.563. That's pretty impressive. There are higher, but that gets you into an even longer, heavier bullet. And for me, the 6.5 Creed is really at its best, probably with that 120 to 140 grain bullet range. That's the feeling I'm getting for it with my usage so far. Uh, Sierra does not list a G7BC for it. Fair enough. I can go with G1 just fine. And required twist is 1 to 8, which is very convenient since that's what most Creed mowers have for twist rate. The powder. I had not used N555 before. It's touted as being an excellent powder for 6.5 Creed and similar cartridges. Gavin tested it back in December of 2020. You can look that story up on our channel with great results. It performed very well for him. And I said, well, if it worked good for him, I bet it works good for me. It's very clean burning. It is temperature insensitive, something I've come to appreciate in my hunting rifle cartridges where I may be hunting or sighting in or practicing in the summertime when it's 80 or 90 or even 100 degrees out. And then when I go to hunt, it could be 50, 40, 30 degrees out, maybe colder. Uh, so I like that temperature and sensitivity because in some powders, traditional powders that are more sensitive to temperature changes, you can get some drastic point of impact changes over the temperature range. Uh, copper fouling is reduced with this powder. And that's a good thing, because if you're going to be practicing a lot, I don't necessarily like to have to stop and clean my barrel all the time. I had a bad experience years ago where I had some really soft bullets in a high-velocity cartridge, and if I didn't clean that barrel every 15 to 20 rounds, accuracy went to pieces. That's not the case with this, not at all. I've shot probably well over 100 rounds now, no deterioration of accuracy with this load whatsoever. Um, they also talk about, Vitavori does, and I haven't had a chance to test this, their lot-to-lot -lot consistency. They're very proud of it, and they talk about how, okay, you buy some of this powder now, you use it, you burn it all up, you have to replace it maybe a year later or something, and you get a, from a different lot of powder, and they claim that you will not have to work your load up again, which is a time-consuming process. They say, just keep going with it. I don't know. I haven't tested that out enough because I haven't fired enough of this stuff yet to uh, find out. I did find that it flows very well through my manual powder measure. I use my old RCBS Uniflow powder measure, just throwing the charges manually. And although I did use a trickler to bring them up to the desired 43 grains, I didn't have to do very much of that. I should have kept track of the weights that I was throwing. Didn't do that, but they were all 43 grains when I charged the cases. I had noticed an unusual press sitting in the back room here with all the other presses, and I wanted to give it a try. It's RCBS's Summit Press, and we had uh, done an article on it quite a while ago, Gavin had, and then it kind of resurfaced during the Rock Chuck Olympics a few months ago, and I took note of it and I said, you know, kind of jokingly, I want to try that upside down press. It's not really upside down, it just works differently raises and lowers the die to the cartridge case rather than the other way around. Okay, why not? In addition to the press, I also used what RCBS is calling their Supreme die set. And the Supreme die set comes with the regular two die set for the 6.5 Creedmoor or several other very popular cartridges. Also comes with the shell holder, the proper shell holder for the 473 head size, and then it comes with a case gauge, which is real nice for checking to see if your ammunition 
is sized properly. And look at that, perfect. So that's a real nice thing. This is a, a nice addition. You may already have this, some of this stuff, like your shell holder, you probably already have that. But if you don't have that and you want to just get into reloading, give that, give that die set a, a, a try, the Supreme die set from RCBS. It's a nice one-stop one shopping. I loaded uh, over 100 cases, and the new reloading press, the Summit Press, was very reliable for me, very easy to use. It took me all of a few strokes of trying to get used to it, uh, being a little bit different from most reloading presses, and that was fine. It worked out real good for me at home. I also found it was, it was kind of neat. I've been loading with RCBS since the 70s, and most of my stuff at home for RCBS dates back to the 1980s, and I just hauled that stuff out put it all up there on my bench and used it, and it was like it was just functioning just as good as new. Uh, I found that pretty gratifying. The good old uh, balance scale and the uh, Uniflow powder measure, absolutely no problems. So they were good designs then, and they're still working good now. In conclusion, what I found is a 6.5 is indeed easy to shoot. It's not a great big cartridge. It's your typical short action cartridge. Fits in that 2.8 inch magazine. So it's not overbore, it doesn't have lots and lots of gunpowder, it doesn't have crazy high velocities, but it does have very good accuracy potential. This has a lot to do with the fact that it's that modern case design with the sharp shoulders, and it lets you use those really long, heavy bullets, like up to 156 grains on this if you wanted to. Uh, that helps a lot. That's kind of the modern case design, and it's been well proven in both target shooting and in the hunting fields already. The rifle and optics, wow, uh, I have to admit, not the kind of thing that I typically hunt with. Usually I go for something more traditional, but I really like what I'm seeing here. I like the comfort of it. The, uh, the stock was comfortable to use and the scope was very bright and clear. I was able to use that scope after it got dark enough in the late afternoon and evening where I couldn't use my pretty high quality binoculars anymore. They couldn't see clearly, but I could still see beautifully through the scope. That's something that as a hunter I really value. The accessories we took with us on the hunt, they're all well proven, not a problem. I like that Ultradyne carbon tripod. Worked out real well, pretty easy to carry along. It's interesting when you're going with how you're gonna have your rifle support. For most of my hunting career, I've either relied on my sling to use as a shooting aid or throwing the rifle down across my backpack or possibly using a nearby log or something else that was handy. I've used a lot of different things in the field. It's nice to have something with you. Many times that answer has been a bipod. Okay, that works pretty good. I have to admit that I like the way a well-balanced hunting rifle like this feels without an additional pound of bipod weight out there on the fore end. And I thought, well, how can I do that? Well, I can have that with a tripod. And I started using a tripod a few years ago, but it's a much heavier model from another maker. Um, kind, of, kind of difficult to haul along. Great for accuracy, and I have to admit, the last few uh, big game hunts that I've had were finished up with a shot from a tripod works out well. This was much easier to carry around than the other one that I'd been using. The hunting ammo, okay, I didn't get to shoot a deer with it, working on that, didn't get to shoot a deer with it, but I really liked what I saw at the target range. I was consistently under one MOA with the rifle and the ammo. I was also amazed at that 8.1 feet per second standard deviation. That is the mark of something good, and I think once I get some more time with this rifle and get some more shooting in with it, I think we're going to be a real good combination. I was uh, shooting targets out at 250 and 300 yards just fine, steel targets, smacking them time after time, no problem whatsoever. Didn't push it to any kind of crazy distances. I don't usually hunt at crazy distances, okay? Maybe not crazy, long distances, okay? The RCBS gear, once again, proved its worth. This Summit Press, very nice to use. If you're looking for something a little different, this just might fill the bill. Take a look at Gavin's video on the Summit Press where he breaks down in more detail about it. 
it's a, it's a good piece of gear, something that you might want to consider. In the future, I'm going to be doing some more, more hunting with this thing. I'm going to take it out for predator hunting this winter. I'm going to be out there looking for coyotes. If I get real lucky, I may get on a cougar. You never know. I keep trying, and we'll see what we can come up with on that. There is more hunting ahead for this. It might even be something that I take out for deer again. I hope so. I have no reason to not hunt with it. So what I want to know is are you using the 6.5 Creedmoor for hunting? If so, what kind of big game animals have you been going after with it? And what have your results been? Have you used Sierra's tip game king yet? That's, uh, that's an interesting bullet and I want to see how it does on game. Tell us what you did. Drop a comment and we'll have a discussion. That means it's time to end this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you want to learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're going to want to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.